This is a video for the A-level chemistry topic of thermodynamics, and in this we're going to look at two easily confused enthalpies, the enthalpy of solution and the enthalpy of hydration. What each one is, what the equations for them are, and how you can also put them together in a cycle. An enthalpy change is the energy given out or absorbed at a constant pressure and a stated temperature. And the standard enthalpy change of solution is the enthalpy change when one mole of solute dissolves in just enough water to form a solution where the ions no longer interact with each other. If we look at an equation for this sort of process, we can identify a couple of key things. Firstly, it's important that you're starting with one mole of the solute. Depending on the solute you're looking at, that may mean that you create more than one mole of ions at the end of it, but that's completely fine. It's the one mole of solute that's important. We tend to also write AQ instead of H2O, just because this is a physical process and we're adding an indeterminate amount of water, whereas using H2O would kind of imply that this is a chemical reaction and we're adding a certain number of molecules. Based on these examples, pause the video and write an equation that represents the standard enthalpy of solution for silver nitrate, potassium hydroxide and iron bromide. In order to answer this question, you firstly need to be confident in identifying what the symbol formula for each of these compounds will be. So silver nitrate will be AgNO3, potassium hydroxide will be KOH, and iron 3 bromide will be FeBr3. Once we know that, we can take one mole of each solute and split it apart into its hydrated ions. The standard enthalpy of hydration sounds like it could be similar to the standard enthalpy of solution, and students often mix these two up, but they're actually different processes. In the standard enthalpy of hydration, we're taking one mole of gaseous ions, so the state symbols are important in the equation, and we're surrounding them by water molecules until they're aqueous. Here are two equations that represent this change. Based on these, pause the video and see if you can write an equation that represents the standard enthalpy of hydration for bromide ions, copper and calcium ions. In each instance you should have one mole of the standard iron for that element and then you're adding some water to produce aqueous ions. So for copper it's going to look like this and for calcium it's going to look like this. So in each instance we're moving from gaseous state symbols to aqueous state symbols. I can use these two enthalpy changes together to make a thermodynamic cycle. And that's useful because Hess's law tells me that the overall enthalpy change for a process is independent of the route taken. So using these together allows me to calculate an enthalpy of lattice formation. This is the enthalpy change when one mole of solid ionic compound is made from the gaseous ions. And that's not a process that you can measure directly um, and therefore it's useful to be able to calculate it using a thermochemical cycle. So when I have a question like this, the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to write a chemical equation for each one of these enthalpies. And doing that is going to make it a lot easier for me to assemble my cycle, and it's going to make sure that when I do, all of my arrows are going in the right direction, because I've already put them in these equations. So then I've got my enthalpies of hydration, so that's where the gaseous ions are surrounded by water to make aqueous ions. And over here we've got the chloride, which again is a gaseous ion surrounded by water to make aqueous chloride ions. So now that I have all of these individual equations, I can start to put them together into a thermochemical cycle. So I'm going to start out with my enthalpy of solution. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in or sort of where you start as long as the, um, they all kind of join up together. So I can see that that finishes with the aqueous potassium and chloride ions, and my second and third equations also finish with them. Um, so I'm going to do my uh, gaseous potassium and my gaseous um, chloride, and I'm going to put those two going like this. So we're going to finish in the same place. And then what I'm trying to figure out is the um, enthalpy change when we go from these gaseous ions to this solid compound. So I can add some numbers to this. Um, so we know that the enthalpy change of solution is 26, and then this hydration is minus 322, and this hydration here is minus 359. And then what I'm always going to do 
um, and my students laugh at me for this, is I write start and end. Because what I want to do is I want to know the value of this arrow moving from where I've written start to where, I'm, um, where I've written end. But I can't do that. I'm going to have to go the wrong way around the cycle. But that's OK, because Hess's law tells me that it's all going to work out with the same overall entropy change. So I'm going to end up with something that looks a bit like this. So what I'm doing, first of all, is I'm going the right way up these two arrows on the right hand side. So I'm going to have minus 322 plus minus 359. I don't need to do anything with the signs. I don't need to flip them because I'm going the right way up the arrow. And then here, where I've got the entropy change of solution, I'm now going the wrong way up that arrow. So I'm then going to need to um, do negative for this. So take away plus 26. And that gives me a total value of minus 707 kilojoules per mole. So that, therefore, is my answer for this question mark here. That is my entropy change of lattice formation. Here's an alternative way of using a similar cycle. So now we've been given the entropy of solution and one of the entropies of hydration, but we've been given the entropy of lattice formation this time, and we're going to need to calculate the entropy of hydration for the chloride ions. So again, I'm going to start out by writing out um, an equation that represents each one of these entropy changes. And one thing you'll spot this time around is that I've got two moles of chloride ions, and this is a really common thing to watch out for in the exam, because what they're going to do is they're going to give you something with um, two moles of ions in there, and then um, you're going to forget to divide by two when you're working out what the entropy change is, and so you end up missing out on a mark, and it's really, really easily done. So you'll see this time around that my second equation finishes where my first equation started. So they're going to be two sides of the triangle. And then here's my hydration for my calcium. So in exactly the same way, I'm going to start out, I'm going to have my entropy change of solution at the top. And then that second equation is going to actually come up here on the left hand side. So that's my gaseous calcium ions and those two moles of gaseous chloride ions. So that's the entropy change that I can't measure directly. And then up here to be the right side of the cycle, I know that coming from the calcium, I've got one arrow which has a value of minus 1650. And then I've also got this arrow here. Uh, which I'm going to need to calculate the value of. So we're going to call that 2x because there are two moles of chloride ions um, and then this first entropy change was minus 110 for the entropy change of solution and the entropy change of lattice formation is minus 2258. So again what I need to do is work out the value of this right hand arrow and first of all I'm going to work out um, both of the right hand arrows together if you see what I mean. So again we're going to write start and we're going to write end and then we're going to do an alternative arrow um, going the other way around the cycle. So I can't go from the bottom to the top so instead I'm going to go around to the left and around like this. So this time around I've gone the right way up my um, entropy of lattice formation arrow. So minus two two five eight and then I've gone the right way along my entropy of solution arrow. So that's effectively plus minus 110, but I'm just being a little bit lazy there. Um, so that gives me a value of minus 2368. So I now know that these two together are minus 2368. So minus 2368 equals minus 1650 plus 2x. So now I'm going to add 1650 to both sides of my equation in order to get rid of it from the right and I'm left with minus 718 is 2x. So therefore to get x, obviously I'm just going to divide by 2 and I end up with minus 359 kilojoules per mole. I ran out of room for the units. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling a little bit more confident about how you can use these two standard entropies together in a cycle. If you did find this video useful, then let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.